So with this core question, how much of the graph can we identify with a given set of interventions, we're essentially asking to extend the notion of Markov equivalence to the interventional setting, right? We want to develop some sort of notion of interventional Markov equivalence, Markov equivalence under some set of interventions. We'll first develop this notion of interventional Markov equivalence in the single node intervention case with single node parametric interventions. So consider the true graph where we have the complete graph on A, B, and C. We know that the essential graph here is just the complete graph where all the edges are undirected. Then say we were intervening on C, we would get this interventional graph where we have a intervention node here where we draw an edge from that intervention node to the variable we're intervening on. Importantly, parametric interventions preserve the causal structure, unlike structural interventions. So a structural intervention on C would have deleted this A to C edge and this B to C edge. And by preserving this causal structure, we're able to detect some immoralities now with this parametric intervention node. So we have an immorality here with AC and IC. And that allows us to then direct this edge from A to C because we know that we can detect immoralities in data. Similarly, we have an immorality now between B, C, and I, C, right? So it's this immorality right here. And that allows us to direct this edge from B to C. So this graph where we've intervened on I, C has a corresponding interventional essential graph. That's what we've written here the interventional essential graph with respect to the intervention I sub C. Then if we add another single node intervention on B, then we can identify the causal graph by directing this final edge from A to B using that immorality there. Similarly, say we didn't intervene on B, but we intervened on A instead. Well, we can actually still identify the causal graph here, even though we that doesn't create a new immorality. Rather, what it does is it tells us that there's no immorality involved with A and IA. So because we detect that there's not an immorality there, and because we only have left this edge to orient, so because we know there's no immorality here, we know that the edge doesn't go in this direction. Otherwise, we would have detected an immorality in the data. Therefore, we can direct this edge from A to B. One other way you could think about this is that when we intervene on A, when we do a parametric intervention on A, then that will change the distribution of B, right? So that change in distribution of A will propagate to a change in distribution of B. And that's because there's an arrow from A to B. If there were an arrow from B to A, that change in distribution for A would not propagate to B. So another way to talk about orienting this edge here is by detecting change in distribution in B when we've done a parametric intervention on A. Okay, so here we have the interventional graph. That's where we take the true graph and we augment it with these intervention nodes and variables. And that's where we can get the notion of interventional Markov equivalence in the single node setting. So we have that two graphs augmented with single node intervention. So that's the interventional graphs on the previous slide, two graphs like this are interventionally Markov equivalent if and only if they have the same skeletons and immoralities. So if you take two separate graphs, you add the same exact intervention nodes and edges to those two graphs, and then if those augmented graphs have the same skeletons and immoralities, then they're interventionally Markov equivalent. Then you can use the theorem from Tin and Pearl 2001 to show that result that we mentioned about the number of interventions for identification when you're doing parametric interventions being n minus 1. So just imagine putting a single node intervention on every single variable in the graph except for one of them. That will create n minus 1 immoralities which will allow you to identify the direction of the edges going into those n minus 1 nodes that were intervened on. And then that indirectly tells us the orientation of the edges of the remaining nth node. Since we'll know that any of its edges that are left undirected weren't directed into 
those other nodes, so they must be directed into this nth node. So that's how you get the n minus 1 interventions, allow you to identify a causal graph from this Markov equivalence theorem. And this theorem is about single node parametric interventions. But what if we want Markov equivalence extended to multi node interventions? So here we have that graph from two slides ago where we show two single node interventions. So IA is a single node intervention, and we know it's single node because there's only an edge from IA to one variable. Same with IC, it's a single node intervention with only one edge pointing out of it. In contrast, here would be one multi-node intervention. So we have this intervention I1, and it has more than one edge pointing out of it, two edges. So it's intervening on both B and C. So that's like we have an intervention where we're intervening on a set of variables, in this case B and C and it's only one multi-node intervention, then this is the interventional graph for that one multi-node intervention, and then this is the graph for a two multi-node intervention, where the second intervention is intervening on both A and C. And we'll now extend the notion of interventional Markov equivalence to multi-node parametric interventions. So that's this theorem, which states, given the observational data, two graphs, augmented with multi-node interventions, are interventionally equivalent if and only if they have the same skeletons and immoralities. So when I say two graphs augmented with multi-node interventions, that's the thing I showed you on the previous slide. As an example, consider this complete graph with A, B, and C as the true causal graph. We know that the corresponding essential graph is this complete undirected graph. Then if we were to intervene on B and C with a single multi-node intervention, this would create a immorality I, B, A. And that allows us to orient this edge in this sort of interventional essential graph. And similarly, we have an immorality between A, C, and I, which allows us to orient this edge. So by doing this intervention, we were able to orient these two edges. And what about this final edge? Well, we don't actually have an immorality. So say we look at this B to C to I, right? We have this V here, but it's not an immorality because I is connected to B. So that means that we can't orient this final edge. So this is the interventional essential graph that we end up from the single intervention I on two nodes, B and C. So here is a graph that this graph is interventionally Markov equivalent to. So this graph is, if you just ignore this I node here, it's the one where we've just flipped the edge between B and C. We flipped it so now C is pointing to B, and it has the same skeleton as this graph, and it has the same immoralities as well. I, B, and A, I, C, and A, and it doesn't have this immorality right here. I, B, C, it doesn't have that because I and C are connected. So this graph on the right is interventionally Markov equivalent to this graph on the left, where we've specified the intervention we're talking about when we say interventionally Markov equivalent. That phrase is relative to the interventions that we're talking about. Here we only have one single node intervention, but you could imagine multiple single node interventions like in that previous slide. And this notion of interventional Markov equivalence extended to the multi-node intervention setting comes from Yang et al. 2018. This works for general multi-node parametric interventions, but there was an analogous result for specifically structural slash perfect multi-node interventions from Hauser and Buhlmann 2012. And that concludes this section on interventional Markov equivalence and brings us to these four questions. So I'll go ahead and let you read these. The first question isn't about the graph here, but questions two through four are about this graph on this slide here. So go ahead and pause and go through these questions. 